first place I'd like to start is the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's call to action number 18 to 24. Uh, there are 94 of those calls to action that were released in 2015. And number 18 and 24 are specific to the healthcare sector. Um, a couple of which would be things like um, having a cultural competency training course in Indigenous health for all nurses and doctors in the in their school curriculums. Another one is to support uh, Indigenous students to be as to be successful in applying for and continuing and completing a so doctor and nursing education. Um, and there's there's several others. So to to just take a look at them and say what in my organization could could we do to contribute to these calls to action? And then there's also um, a call to action number 92, which has three points that are specific to the business sector. Because those, and I know they're, they're older than they used to be, I realize it's almost 2024 already, but those recommendations or calls to action have come with a lot of consultation and sharing among Indigenous communities about what they think other Canadians could do to help contribute to a better future for Indigenous peoples. And so to me, that's the most practical place to start to carry out a recommendation as much as possible where, where it's possible. And also to learn ourselves, to learn as much as we can, to read read those reports, read the the national inquiry, but uh, calls for justice for the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and gender diverse people. And to, to learn what we can from the, there's a wealth now available of books, or podcasts, um, websites, initiatives that we can attend and learn uh, without, without having to ask additional work to be done by Indigenous people to educate us about Canada's history. So there's a lot we can start with ourselves and then just think about, yeah, to think about what we could do to build build relationships with Indigenous peoples in the regions where we live. Come to it with a posture of humility saying, what could we do to support you? There's a lot of different ways to that people have approached it, governments have approached it, whether it's to reduce the gap or like close the life expectancy gap. There's all this stuff about the mortality rate, all of these things that that just shine the flashlight on how, you know, the, the poor health or the bad indicators of health that are happening in Indigenous communities, when really I think what we should be doing is learning about the strengths of Indigenous communities and then saying what what can Canadians do to support Indigenous communities and their strengths? How do we take a step back and, uh, and be supporters of that and work together and acknowledge the past and then say, how how do we move forward? And those are those are tough conversations, and I think they can happen over years, really. Um, but I, I think it's really worth doing because that's the, the Canada we want to leave to our children. We want a, a Canada where Indigenous peoples and other Canadians, whether we're descended from European settlers, whether we just moved here five years ago, whether our parents came as immigrants, um, whether we came here for work and then stayed, you know, all of us have something we could contribute to building a future where our children work together and play together as friends, as people who who know each other's uniquenesses and differences and use them to build the best society we can build in Canada. And that includes having the best healthcare system we possibly can make that doesn't treat certain groups worse than other groups. Mm -hmm.